This is Michael Saltzman and I'm the director of digital product at Blue Sky Bio. In this tutorial video, I want to demonstrate the functionality of creating an aligner trim curve and generating the machine code so that the milling machine can automatically trim the aligner. We're talking about a situation where the aligner was manufactured and now a milling machine is going to automatically trim the aligner. Blue Sky Bio distributes a line of VersaMill milling machines. You can see them by clicking on milling in the horizontal slider. This functionality works with other milling machines as well. And we're going to take a look at the capabilities and different customization options as we go through the process. We are going to quickly work through the process of a digital tooth setup to show the end-to-end -end process flow. If you're familiar with doing a digital tooth setup in Blue Sky Plan Ortho, then you can skip a bit and get to the point where we describe the process of creating the line of trim curve and generating the machine code. Before we get started, I want to pull up the preferences. There's a couple of important preferences that we should note here when creating the line of trim curve for automatic trimming. When we go to orthodontics, we could see our preferences panel. First setting that we have here under model trimming is gingiva trim margin. This is the distance under the gingiva margin that the software will automatically create a trim curve to clean up the model. This is prior to the step of generating the automatic uh, trim curve. This is just for cleaning up the model. And the software places that curve two millimeters under the gingiva margin. And then the settings underneath that is how much space should be left for the model height underneath the trim curve. And we're gonna see, how, we're gonna see what that means as we go through the process flow. When you're creating the curve for automatic milling, you're gonna see that we're gonna be adding a locator to properly position the model in the milling machine. Most locators have a height to them. So you need to make sure that the height under the trim curve is high enough for that. So if your locator is four millimeters high, as in our situation, we're going to leave a height under the model cleanup trim curve of five millimeters for both the upper and lower arch. So that's an important setting to keep in mind. If we scroll down, we'll see here as well that we have additional settings in terms of generating the machine code. First, we have our curve file delimiter. That's what's going to define the spacing in the machine code. By default, it's a space. You could change it to a comma as well. We also have the curve file extension. By default, it's a .xyz file. And you can use that setting or you could choose custom and enter any other option that you like. This is going to be the file extension for the machine code file. The last setting that's relevant is the exported curve point spacing. What that is, is to find the spacing between the dots, between the coordinates that the machine is going to be getting. By default, it's every half a millimeter. The machine and the milling machine will receive a coordinate and you could leave that as default, or if need be, you could change the custom setting. So now that we've confirmed these settings, okay, and we could start the process. Let's start the process of loading the models and creating the tooth setup. I'm going to click on orthodontics, choose aligners, and select the option for import models. The software will bring up the directory of your computer. You can navigate through the different folders to the location of the relevant data set. You can also use the shortcut buttons on the top. I'm going to select the lower jaw scan, click OK. Confirm for the software that this is indeed a mandible. And then I'm going to click import opposing arch. I'm going to select the opposing jaw, click OK. And in the patient name box, we could enter the patient's name or a unique identifier. And I'm going to comment at this point that you should not use any other software prior to import to close or clean up the models. When doing so, it creates the potential for complications. We're going to demonstrate how the models will be closed and cleaned in this workflow. I'm clicking continue to draw alignment. I'm going to rotate the model by holding down, by holding down my left mouse button and grabbing and dragging. And I'm going to follow the image on the right side of the screen by holding down my shift key and placing two dots in the corners of each tooth on the outer edge. T 
to indicate that a tooth is missing, instead of left clicking, I'm going to right click and place a blue dot. I'm going to continue as indicated to the opposite side of the jaw, hold down the shift key and left click with my mouse button. To rotate, I'm letting go of the shift key and using my left mouse button to grab and drag. Once I've accomplished that, I'm going to click finish teeth marking, close model. Our model has been closed and then I'm going to click continue with mandible. I'm going to repeat the process of marking the teeth. If a tooth is missing, then I'm going to right click to place that blue dot and I'm going to do so close to the teeth, between the teeth, on the buckle side. Clicking continue to teeth segmentation. The software has automatically segmented the teeth. If we want to improve the segmentation, which we're not going to focus on now, but just quickly, you could click and either grab any of the dots or just hold down the shift key and with your left mouse button, just, just drag. We're going to check the segmentation on the mandible as well. We could see the auto segmentation did quite a good job. We could do any fixes or fine tuning. And there's more functionality which we're not going to get into, but we see how the software segmented the teeth and we can make any adjustments that we want to. I'm going to click continue to model trimming. Now this trimming is not connected to the aligner trim curve for the milling machine. The trimming that we're doing now is to clean up the models and remove any excess or extra material. Later in the process, after we do the tooth setup, we're going to create the liner trim curve and then generate the code for the milling machine. The software has automatically generated the trim curve to clean up the models. That was the two millimeter setting that we saw here. Gingiva trim margin, two millimeters and it created this trim curve two millimeters below the gingiva margin. We could adjust the nodes to modify the curve if needed. We could review the curve on the mandible as well. And if we see that the curve was placed to our satisfaction, we could click continue to teeth moving and the software is going to trim the models to clean them up. It's going to remove any material outside of the trim curve, but it's going to keep the material within the trim curve and the height that we set over here, model height below, teeth after trimming. Okay, if we don't want the software to trim the models for whatever reason, then we could click don't trim mandible, don't trim maxilla. But we want the trim generally to happen, so we're going to click continue, continue to teeth moving. Okay, so now we see the case after the teeth have been segmented, after the arch has been cleaned up, we see the remaining gingiva. We could go ahead and fine-tune the teeth placement and do our digital tooth setup. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to take a look at the automatic snap to curve, reposition the curve slightly, and then click snap all teeth. The software gives us a proposed tooth setup. Again, we could use the widget, select the different teeth, and do an exact, very exact tooth setup. For now, we're just going to take a look at the mandible. Rotating by holding down my left mouse button, I could grab the automatic trim curve, modify it if needed, and then click snap all teeth and we're going to use this proposed setup 
and continue to edit steps. So for our setup, the software built a longer set of steps for the maxilla and for the mandible. We could see that there was less teeth movement. And what's important at this point is we're going to scroll down and click if we need to add buttons or want to add buttons and we check that checkbox. For now, we're not going to do that, but we want to click design aligner trim curve advanced and we're going to click continue to design aligner trim curve. The software has automatically created for us the aligner trim curve. This is the curve that the milling machine is going to use to automatically trim the aligner. The distance between the gingival margin and the proposed trim curve can be seen here as the trim margin. If we want to lower it or raise it, we could change the value and click reset curve. We could do the same by switching to the maxilla and, many, and making any relevant changes for the upper arch. We have the option of either creating a continuous curve or a scalloped curve. Again, change the setting, click reset curve, and we could see the effect that it has there. We could switch to the upper arch and do the same if we so desire. What we see on the bottom is our locator. This locator has two coordinate points. Different milling machines work with different locators and we're able to add additional locators to the software if needed. But this locator is going to be attached to every model that the software generates. So when the liner is created and the liner and the model are positioned into the milling machine, the positioning can be exact and relevant and the milling machine can go ahead and trim the line. We can change any of the settings here in terms of the trim margin distance, continuous versus scalloped. We could toggle on and off the locator. And once, we can also grab any of the nodes if we want to manually update the curve. And we're going to make any changes to the set of models that we see currently on the screen, but the software will cascade the change through all of the relevant models. Okay, let's press continue to export. In this step prior to export, we should make sure to do two things. Add a base for vertical printing of the models. And just very quickly to demonstrate some of this functionality that we have here. We can add a base to each model and the software will add the base to the full set of models. We could do the same thing for the upper arch. And the other thing that we want to make sure to do is to add a label to the model. Click show label and we could go ahead and position decide where we want to add to emboss or engrave the label. If we just want to have the numbering and not the patient identifier, simply delete it here and just the numbering will show up. So very quickly, you could position it on the model in the correct position. We also have in properties the ability to put the number with the text on the same horizontal line. So that's fine. Then you would click apply and it will be embossed or engraved into the full set of models. The other thing that we could see is, is to show the liner trim curve on the full set of models. And if there's a particular model, for whatever reason you want to modify the trim curve, then just click the edit curve button. Finally, we have the option of ex exporting the models with the locator and to export the liner trim curve. So if we want to take a look at this, let's export all three, the models with the locator and to export the liner trim curve, which will generate the machine code for the milling machine. We're going to go ahead and click on export. One final thing before we do so that I forgot to mention is if we want to separate the platforms, which means to open them up like this to reduce the printing material and their printing time, we could go ahead and do so. Okay, now we have models, locators, export aligner trim curve, and we could go ahead and click on export. 
The software is confirming what we just discussed, that we added the platform for horizontal printing, and we added the model and the patient name to the models. It's not required, but it's suggested, so we have the confirmation popping up automatically. The software will ask us to identify the location of where the generated files should be saved. I'm going to click on desktop, generate a new folder, liner trim curve export, and click on OK. This will take a bit of time. You can let the computer run. It's generating the models and it's exporting the models and the trim curves and the machine code. So each individual model doesn't take that long, but when you're exporting a significant set, then you could see that it does take some time. The software has finished generating the models and generating the machine code files for the mandible. We could click on Maxilla and go ahead and export those data files. But let's take a look in our folder that we have on the desktop and we could see that for each for each model we have the 3d file for the model and we have the machine code file that could go to the milling machine with the ending that we had identified in properties the next step would be to print the models create the liners and then to pass the machine code files to the milling machine to automatically trim the liners.